This is CBS Sports HQ presented by Caesar Sportsbook. We're going to get you picks from every game this week in the NFL. I'm Chris Hassel turning the page to week four. We do have five unbeatens, four of which didn't even make the playoffs last season. And even the Cincinnati Bengals, who haven't won a playoff game in 30 years, have hope. A two and one start, a tie for first, and favored to win Thursday against the Jags. Week four in the NFL begins with a battle of the last two number one overall picks. Trevor Lawrence going up against Joe Burrow. Been a rough start to the season for Lawrence and the Jags. They've lost all three games by double digits. And Lawrence is tied for a league high in interceptions with seven already. But even though he's already lost more games as a Jaguar than he did at Clemson, he's determined to right the ship. The same thing, we fought to the very end and sucks losing, especially that way. But we're going to get better. As for the Bengals, well, they're two and one, tied for first in the AFC North, and things are looking up. It feels good to win on the road. It feels good to win in the division. It feels good to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. Joe Burrow has made a complete recovery from last November's ACL injury and looks every bit of the player the Bengals hoped he would be when they made him their first overall pick. It's an exciting time to be a Bengal, to be a fan of the Bengals, and you know, it's going to keep this thing rolling. Will the Bengals jump out to a 3-1 record and take sole possession of first in the AFC North? Or can Trevor Lawrence and Urban Meyer pick up their first NFL win? Week 4 about to get underway in Cincy. We are going to pick that one in every game in the NFL like we do each and every week. I'm Chris Hassel joined by Brady Quinn and Pete Prisco and Brady Red hot last week, not just against the spread, but Brady kept his own over under mark. What were you against uh, for the it, total? It, well, to Pete, it doesn't matter, but I include them for our, our, our viewers because I was 14 and 2. Nobody, nobody. <laughs> oh, they it do because they'll make money off you 14 tally, and you, ta two. you tallied it up. Yes. Okay. The what problem is we're losses? making picks on Wednesday. What were your two losses? Maybe even a little shorter. What were your sharper. two losses? I don't have them in front of me. Yeah. See, I don't think he has any documentation. I think he's just. I can it forward out you there. the email. We keep track of all this. I, I, we we do our own accounting here because no. we want to ensure that no, we all don't pick. We are don't. Accurate. We, we're there, not a flip flop or like some Pete Prisco. There's, not, there's not. They just did the accounting. We just saw it. How'd you do last week? Bad. Well, what would you describe yourself as last week? Seven and nine. No, no, no. But what would that be? Loser. Okay. I was just making sure. I was just <laughs> making sure that's still, oh, okay. But not as bad as you were the week before, though. Right. But actually, if you just saw the overall standings, now you're the loser. You're down right. one. Good luck this week. Right. Good luck this but, week. Pete's do because he's three weeks in now. He's not a awful. single week yeah. above 500. No, not a single awful. winning week, Pete. That's not true. That is true. I, had, I thought I had one week. No, you were 500. 500. No, you were eight and eight in week. First one. week we were 500. You've been less than that ever since. <laughs> Well, that, wasn't in fact, six, you're going downhill. It wasn't 6-10. and ten. You're, you're going downhill. It was actually 5-10-1. At you're least, uh, unlike your Jaguars, you do have a couple of wins this season. The Jaguars do not. And uh, the Bengals are giving 7.5 at home. It's a matchup between the last two number one overall picks. Well, just to begin with, we're getting to that point in the season now where, where guys are starting to feel you know, the, the rigors of an NFL schedule. And so you always give the advantage to the home team on the short week. But the Bengals team, this is going to be a competitive team. I mean, bottom line is we haven't seen much of the Jacksonville Jaguars that would make you think otherwise. So with what we're seeing from Joe Burrow, he looks healthy. He looks confident. The defense is improved for Cincinnati. And until we see more life from the Jacksonville Jaguars on offense and then the, the, the ability for the defense to stop anyone, Pete, I'm going to go ahead and lay the seven and a half points. I don't feel great about it. it. It's kind of a big spread for the Cincinnati Bengals team that I know they're two and one, but I'm not necessarily so much buying in that they're going to the playoffs or anything. Uh, but I'll go ahead and lay the seven and a half points. I'm going to take the seven and a half. I thought the Jaguars defense actually played better last week against Arizona. Uh, they, you know, they were really good on third down. I think the Cardinals were one of nine, I think, or one of ten on third down. My only hesitation is in case they're running the ball and they drive the ball down the field, run, 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 get a touchdown, and then try a flea flicker in their own end, which was just a horrible call, terrible decision. Uh, but I think they hang around in this game. I know it's bucking the trend of road team on a Thursday night, but I'm going to take the Jaguars plus the seven and a half. And I think they're a bad team. I just think they'll hang around. Okay, bottom line though, low scoring game in your mind. I don't see too many teams scoring yes. a bunch of points on yes. short weeks. Low scoring like, game. In, in particular on this one. Low scoring game. Trevor Lawrence just 38% passing against man to man defense. What grade would you give him so far this season, Pete? Well, I mean, okay, I'll give you an example. Last week he hit the tight end in the hands on a man to man coverage and popped off his hands okay. and picked it off and went the other way. So there are a lot of different circumstances there. He makes throws that you go, okay, there it is. It's going to be a great. He made a touchdown throw to DJ Chark. 
that only a few guys in this league can make. Right. That tells you he's going to be a good player. Well, and hence the reason, too, you make a trade for Dan Arnold this past week. You move on from C.J. Henderson. I think we kind of felt like that might have been coming on. But also, I'm not saying that Dan, Dan Arnold's going to open up this offense, but he will provide some help there at the tight ends. I agree. All right, let's move on to a really intriguing matchup here. The 3-0 Panthers, great defense against the Dallas Cowboys, who look like the class of the NFC East once again. I, I can't get over their improvement of their defense, but also doing it while they're a little bit banged up. And Micah Parsons looks phenomenal at the end. I know he made a big deal about the fact that he played it in high school. It's been a while since he's been there, but he looks incredible playing off the edge for them. Maybe they should just keep him there now moving forward. Um, but, you know, Trayvon Diggs. He's growing into that position. We tend to forget, too. He was a uh, converted wide receiver to, cor to quarterback in college, so it was going to take a little bit, I think, for him to really get his feet underneath him. He looks great, and obviously the offense uh, for the Dallas Cowboys is hitting on all cylinders. All that being said, I don't, I don't know about this one. Something tells me the Panthers will be able to keep this one close. Uh, I think the Cowboys win this game, but maybe off that big win on a short week, we see the Panthers hang around in this one. So I'm going to take the five points here and another game where I like the under. I'm going to take the Cowboys. And, and, and Christian McCaffrey was in the game. I'd consider maybe taking the Panthers to hang around. I just think we saw that the other night. Once he went out of the game, their offense was so limited in what they could do. It just changed the dynamic of the way they play and the way they get defended. And you mentioned the Cowboys defense. Dan Quinn's done a great job with that defense. He's been phenomenal. And as far as keeping Parsons at defensive end, why not? They have two other guys that can play linebacker or yeah. three once yeah. Keanu Neal's around. I'd keep him at defensive end, let him rush the passer. But I think the Cowboys are, are really the surprise team to me so far. I didn't think they'd be this good on defense. I think they hang on and win this game by more than five. They're the best team in the NFC East right now. Easily. I think it's, it's fair to say. Easily. They, they should run away with this division. Yeah. Tough game, though, at home. Uh, giving five against the undefeated Carolina Panthers. Let's move on to uh, the team that won it last season in the NFC East, the, the Washington football team, really struggling on defense. One of the worst defensive teams in football stat-wise so far against the Falcons. It's a bit shocking, too, and, and there's some concerns. You know, Chase Young hasn't registered a sack yet. People think that maybe he's, he's too big on some of the off-the-field stuff and building a brand for himself as far as the football. I, I don't buy into that. just haven't been around him so, for such a, a long period of time when he was in college. I just think that the hard thing is for this defense is they, they had to carry the team last year, and I think they got to carry the team this year, especially with Ryan Fitzpatrick out, Taylor Haneke not bringing the same type of offense that you know, I think we were hoping for at the beginning of the season. So bottom line is it's just too much pressure on this group. If you're going to give me a point and a half or a home dog here in the Atlanta Falcons, I'm willing to take that because as, as bad of a matchup is, as that Washington football defensive front versus the Atlanta Falcons offensive line, I still think the Falcons might have found something a little bit, and they'll be able to put up enough points in this one. But shocking, three games in a row, another under for me. I actually have an over-under pick on this one. I got the under as well. There you go. Oh, yeah, we agree hey, on the we under. We actually on agree on something. I'm copying, I'm, copying, on something. I'm copying your paper. I don't agree on the side, though. I like Washington in this game. I, I, you made the big point of why I like Washington. I think their defensive line, which hasn't played well across the board. Allen's done some good things. Is this, this is the perfect time. That <laughs> offensive line is bad, and they're going to get all over Matt Ryan. They're going to force turnovers. I watched, uh, went back and watched the Washington game against the Bills on tape. Jay Young's getting blocked. He's getting blocked. Darrell Williams handled him in a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. That shouldn't happen. Well, it won't happen this week. They're going to get after Matt Ryan. They're going to uh, turn the ball over short fields. Uh, I think Washington covers the number. I, th I think teams have game planned a little bit more for him, too, as, as a rookie. Brady, kind of there were, earn it there were a lot of one on one I, I know there's a lot of one on ones. He doesn't do his part necessarily, but I think more people are going into this match versus the Washington football team saying, we can't let that front beat us, getting the ball out quick, doing some other things to negate that. Do you remember uh, before the season, he, he and Sweat were going to break the. the oh, yeah, the sack. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they're going to get he Sweat has two, he has none. I don't think they're going to get there. <laughs> Matt Ryan, you saw uh, the numbers, he, success against Ron Rivera. And Washington in general. He's 5-0 and against Washington throughout his career. All right. 0-3 Giants at the 2-1 Saints. Saints finally at home giving eight. Yeah, and this is going to be huge. Yeah, I think that, that 12th man advantage is going to be gigantic in this game. The Giants obviously have gotten off to an 0-3 start. Look, we can make the case that there may be a couple or a few plays away from, from their record looking a lot different. The reality is they're 0-3. And I think this is only going to be a snowball effect with the circumstances that they're presented. Having to go on the road for a game in New Orleans, that crowd is going to be amped up for this one. I like, I like what Jameis Winston has done, has done so far. I think as long as he takes care of the football, 
Eight points is kind of a big spread for me in this matchup because I do think the Giants are a little better than the record. I'm going to lay the points, though. But again, another one where I don't think the Giants are going to score many points. I don't think the Saints are going to score that much more either. So I like the under better than I do laying the eight points. I like the Saints, too. I don't love it. I hate laying the big number. But this Saints team got up off the deck last week, and that's impressive. That t- tells you a lot about Sean Payton as a coach. The fact that they went to New England and just dominated the game from start to finish. The, the Patriots were never in the game. And the defense blitzed the heck out of Mac Jones. They came after him. They forced turnovers, got a touchdown off a turnover. Uh, Jameis Winston wasn't great, but he was good enough. He didn't have to be. This game, he won't have to be either. I think the Saints at home with that environment, I think they handle the business easily. Jameis hasn't had to be great in those two victories, Brady, but do you think at some point he's going to have to perform a little bit better through the year? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's always a part of it. But look, let's wait until Michael Thomas gets back. That'll play a factor. And now they're down Armstead, too. Yeah. And their center's out, and now they're down their left tackle. That, that's a problem. You're, you're trying to compete without a bunch of star players. I, I think that's one of the things that's flown under the radar, too, is just how good that offensive line has been over the course of Drew Brees' final years there. Everyone's kind of hung their hat on that. They've, they've drafted as a luxury at that position and had depth. Now we're starting to see that fade away. Uh, fortunately, though, Jameis Winston is, is a little bit more mobile, and, and I think he's going to have to utilize that more uh, moving forward, especially with some of those injuries. And then they bring the gimmick in for some plays once in a while. <laughs> they're running it a lot. 57% of the time, they're running the football. That's oh, the most man. in the you NFL. Just get off yourself. <laughs> Saints minus eight at home. It is now time for my favorite part of the program. It's Pete Prisco's spinning top of the week. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to go. You got to go to Chicago. Oh, right? my gosh. The question is, who do you pick on oh, that offense? All of them. <laughs> they were terrible. Everybody pointed out Jason Peters, and we saw a bad, bunch of bad from him. But Jermaine Effetti, the right tackle, was even worse. The center, Sam Mustafer, was terrible. The guards weren't any better. They were abused, I mean, across the board. Now, Justin Fields wasn't great either. Oh, oh, okay, but, but let's just stop for a second. Can we get some seven-man protections? I agree. Can we mix some stuff? Can, can we, we get the ball out of Justin can Fields' we, hand quick? Can we, can we also block somebody once in a while? I mean, come on, Brady, look at these. This is that, awful. That's, that's part of it. But this look, is awful. That's, that's every, part that's of a, it. That's the entire defense. Well, you should never be putting this offensive line in that position. Has anything changed from week one to right now? For the and, preseason and, right now? And this is, this is a play where the so-called offensive line experts on Twitter said that this was not on Jason Peters because it's a slide protection. Uh, well, it, it, you got to get out there. There's, a, it, you, there's no linebacker coming. He's got to block him. It was bad all the way around. Miles Garrett is the real deal, but they didn't block anybody. Even Clowney, who never rushes the passer yeah, right. anymore, looked like he was going to be good at rushing the passer. So it was a bad performance by the Bears. And, and you're right, they didn't help him any. No. But Justin Fields held the ball a little bit and locked on the receivers. I, I, I get that. He's a rookie. He's going to make some of those mistakes. But my point is still out there. We saw this in the preseason. They struggled to be able to protect. Why would you think going into the regular season it was going to be any different? And now with a rookie, you know he's going to hold on the football. By the way, all those rookies are holding on the football. Zach Wilson, Trevor Lawrence, they all are. Give them more help. Bring in tight ends. Bring in running backs to chip protect. If he's going to hold on the football, or at least protect him better and help out that offensive line. They haven't done enough of that, in my opinion. Block somebody, too. That'd be a nice thing. He's, by the way, he's going to be predicting that someone from the Atlanta Falcons offensive line is going to be the spinning top this week, going up against the Washington football team. Probably. I, I, <laughs> you're, you're already heading in that direction. I'm moving I, I in that direction. Nice. I, so always, got, I look for the spinning You got five spinning tops heading to Chicago, the entire offense. Bad. Line. It was bad. But after giving up nine sacks last week to the Browns, the Bears are home favorites this week, and you got the Detroit Lions coming to town. I say, e- even though Justin Fields didn't have much of a chance and may have performed terribly in-, in chances that he got last week, but give him a chance against the Lions. Why not? Uh, well, of course. I mean, that's. The, I mean, look, he's in there now. I don't. I don't see any reason to go back at this point. Try to build at least an offense though that plays to his strengths. Allow, move him outside the pocket, incorporate more quarterback run game you know, screens, other things that aren't going to put hang them out the dry and stop limiting so many five-man protections. Like, that's not where you're going to excel, especially with a rookie quarterback. But that's the Chicago side of things. I just have a hard time placing a wager on a team that looked as bad as they did a week ago. And I know you don't want to ride that roller coaster with teams in the NFL, but I've at least seen some fight out of the Detroit Lions this year. So if you're going to give me three points, which, 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 which as bad as Chicago looked, I'll gladly take it. And shockingly again at 42 and a half I'm still taking the under in this mm. one I would go under as well um, but I, I my pick is the Bears I just think defensively 
They're going to show up and play well in this game. They're going to do enough to limit, which is why I think it's going to be a low-scoring game like you, Brady. They'll limit that uh, Lions offense. And I'm with you. I think the Lions have played hard. I think that it's a tribute to the coach, Dan Campbell. This is a team that doesn't have a ton of talent, and they're in games, and that, that's a good thing. So uh, I like the way they're playing. I just think the Bears' defense will be the difference in the game. And you have to think that Matt Nagy is going to be smarter than he was the other day and help the kid out and get the ball out and get him some protection. Do you not question, though, the fact that, like, he drafted him and they've had all this time to prepare for that moment when they put him in the game and that's the game plan they roll out? It was terrible. It was a bad plan. It's inexcusable. Like, you, like if you're at ownership in Chicago, you do have to be wondering, what's the plan here? We drafted this young man for a reason. So either Matt Nagy wants him to adapt to his system, which almost no one does anymore, or Matt Nagy and his staff need to say, we need to figure out an offense that's going to play to the strengths of what Justin Fields wants to do. Hey, Ryan Day, help us out putting together an offense or the Ohio State offense to utilize some of that. It was a bad scheme. It was a bad plan, bad offensive line. But Justin Fields wasn't very good either. No, he wasn't. And, and he missed a shot he, down the field. On the he's missed some throws. We've seen that in the preseason. Nothing's changed. It's what we saw in the preseason. No. Nothing's changed. And a bad matchup, too, against a Browns defense that was, that was ready to have its first complete game. Uh, a, a team with not many holes in it, although Pete would have argued otherwise in the offseason, I think. What? what? They haven't played like a team with not <laughs> many holes in it. They played the team, that defense has played like a team with holes in it at times this year. They look, pretty good. They look like the top of the division right now. Let's recap the picks they from do. Pete Bad and division. Brady. And keep in mind, last week, Brady says that he went 14-2 uh, against the total. No documentation. We, we, we'll we provide it by the end of the show if I can get my producer to look it up and, and give it to you. Brady's word for it. Loving the unders. Very few agreements. Uh, Pete and Brady do both like the Saints minus eight against the Giants. They both like the under in the Washington-Atlanta game. Up next, moving on to the early slate on CBS, highlighted by the one and two last place Chiefs. Under 500 for the first time in six years. Touchdown favorites in Philly. Our NFL game previews are presented by Caesars Sportsbook. Taking a look at the early slate on CBS. Few teams uh, under 500 in need of a win. Teams that are looking to get to the playoffs again, like the Chiefs, like the Vikings, like the Dolphins. And boy, the, uh, the Colts could really use a victory. Their season going south in a hurry. They're at Miami at 1 Eastern. Brady Quinn and Pete Prisco helping us pick these games against the spread. The Chiefs, 1 and 2. We're not overreacting anything like that. It's three weeks into the season. The offense still looks good, but the defense has to pick it up. They're giving seven on the road. Yeah, and this is almost, I don't want to say a must win, but I think if you're doing, you know, picking their schedule before the season, you would have said th this is a very winnable game for them on the road. Uh, the difference has been the division. I mean, that's why the narrative around the Chiefs right now, not that anyone's panicking, but you're saying, how are they in dead last? We haven't seen this since, what, 2015? I think it's been since last time we saw a record like this. But it's really about Denver and Las Vegas and even the Chargers coming in their house and beating them last week. That's why there's that narrative around Kansas City. Bottom line, though, this is a get-back-on-track game. You know, I don't like the matchup of that front for the Eagles up against that offensive line for the Chiefs. That being said, Andy Reid, his staff, will be able to scheme around that. They'll be able to make enough plays versus that group. Because you can't feel confident, Pete, based on what we saw from Philly on Monday Night Football. Only handing it off three times to the running backs, that's it? That, that, was, that was your game plan with a team that hasn't showed the ability to throw down field much? Yeah, I didn't like that plan at all. I thought Nick Sariani, two weeks in a row, kind of struggled. I thought his call on fourth down on the goal line against San Francisco, bad decision. Then last week, the game plan wasn't good. Let's slow down the roll a little bit on the Chiefs being buried and done and everything else. If they don't turn the ball over last week, they probably win that game. Has anyone really said that they're done, though? No. no they're still no, the no. betting favorite, right. at least tied. To but the there Bowl. are some people out there questioning them, and, and rightfully so. Defensively, they haven't been great, and that is a concern. It will be a, a concern, I think, for this entire season. But they have Josh Gordon now. So should that save <laughs> everything, Pete? You know, they do need another receiving option. If he's, if he's healthy and he's mentally okay and he's cleared for everything, he might be able to help him down the road. So I don't mind that move. I just think you got to take care of the football. They'll take care of the football in this game. The Eagles are not good right now on offense. And defensively, they, they had some problems stopping the run last week. And, and I think that might show up again here. I like the Chiefs to get back on track here and win the game and cover that number. I like the under in this one. Yeah, you both way. like the Chiefs. But, yeah, you're on the other side uh, of the total. Brady on the under. 
Pete on the over. All right, let's move on to. Let's mark that one down. On the we will. Check mark. Oh, you're going to count the, that the one? The only okay. one you decided yeah, we, to do. We'll make sure. No, I did that another down. one. We oh, you did two? Okay, we, you did two. If we uh, have both have a pick, then we can mark it down and count it. Otherwise, okay, you can't count. One, one out of every four or five games, Pete will pick the total line. Right. Every once in a while, he'll wake if up. If I like one, nobody likes all 16. Brady does. He was 14 and 2. I want all of the action. I guess he liked 14 of them. Hey, this might be the best matchup of the early games on on Sunday. The the Browns 2 and 1, the Vikings 1 and 2. Kirk Cousins playing some good football again. Yeah, and I don't feel great about this pick. I like the under in this game probably better than anything else, but I'm going to go ahead and go with the Browns here. I just think the way they're playing offensively, defense, but everything's kind of working in unison right now. They get Odo Beckham back last week. Um, you know, Kevin Stefanski, you know, he, he knows this team well. So um, at the end of the day, it's almost a pick him in my mind, even though, again, Browns are given two points on the road. A little bit concerned by that, Pete, but if I had to pick one, I'm riding the momentum of where Cleveland's at as a team right now versus Minnesota. See, I like what I saw from the Vikings last week. I, I thought that would be an up-and-down track meet against Seattle. It looked like it was going to be, and Seattle didn't get there to go over the total, which was a loser for me in my best bets. But um, I had the Vikings, and I love the Vikings, and I like the Vikings in this spot. I think the Vikings offensively are tough to stop. They're playing really good football. Kirk Cousins is playing really good football. I got to give him his credit. Give him How about this, Pete? Right. 200 passes without an interception. Are he's playing, streak in he's the playing well. Quarterback scales, Pete? It's, it might be pretty close. This one. Well, who's winning? Uh, right now, I'd give it to Kirk Cousins. He's playing better mm. football. Wow. He's playing you, better football. You know, I'll say this. I'll say this. And this is really to everyone out there. If Pete can grow and change, right, <laughs> so can you. Yeah. Right? Pete is really all you have full, to do is show a me full 180 from you, where he was. No, I'm if saying. you show me, I that, will. I that will old change. saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's a lie. <laughs> that, well, you, listen to this, Pete Prisco, this old dog, you have to prove it to me, and he's proven it to me. He's I, done it for a while. Nah. He's been playing at a high level for a while. We haven't had a big game yet this year. Oh, so we here, we go. here we go. We got to wait for that. But he's playing. I'm giving him his credit. I think they're playing well. And the best thing about the Vikings last week is the defense actually played better because they had been. Awful. Did you have an over/under pick for this one or no? No, I don't. Okay, that's right. Right. Well, I like the under if it matters. Vikings, a lot of unders this Vikings week. win the game outright. You're gonna give me two. I'll take it. And do a better job blocking against the Browns than the Bears did. You're oh. not. You're not. Yeah, well, yeah. Go ahead. What? I'm just wondering how many more under over unders you're picking. The rest I don't remember. I put I'm telling you, it's like in. one out of every four games he'll pick. Okay. Not picking the next one either. It's Colts at Dolphins. That's our next game on CBS at one o'clock Eastern time. Two of the worst offenses in the NFL so far this season. Both these teams averaging fewer than one offensive touchdown a game. Eventually, the Colts are going to start playing some better football. I mean, eventually they have to. Uh, I'm betting this is that time, right? You know, they're getting a point and a half. That's fine. That's great. I do think a low-scoring game, to Chris's point about how bad both offenses have been. But this is the game where I feel like if the Colts want to try to get this thing back on track, you got to win this one versus a Dolphins team. that I, Look, I know you're high on them what they can do defensively, some of the weapons that they have on the outside. I think this is a game that Darius Leonard, that defense, shows up. They get a couple turnovers, and Carson Wentz has what you could say is his best performance of the season so far. They get things back on track in Indy. That's my bet in this one. Colts are playing back-to-back road games. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Right? <laughs> Here they are. This is Jacoby Brissett revenge game. As Jamie Eisenberg would say, he loves those revenge <laughs> games. I don't like them. Uh, but... What do you do in this case? I, I, well, I like, here's why I like Miami. I think the Colts are limited offensively. They don't scare anybody. There's nobody on that offense that scares you. If you choke off the run, nobody else scares you. So I think Miami will be able to use their corners on the outside, limit what they do in the passing game, bring the eight guy down, stop the run, and I think offensively they'll do enough. I agree with you. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. Uh, I'll take Miami. Who scares you on the Dolphins, though? They have speed. They have a ton of speed. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Will Fuller is now who, back. Who He's runs, a part of that. Who runs on the Colts? Who can run on the Colts? Pittman's not fast. No. Pascal, no, you're right. Pascal's you're not right. fast. But, but the biggest thing that you said, though, I think is what the Colts are going to lean on, the running game. They're going to get Jonathan Taylor going in this one. But he'd one. bring the eighth man down if nobody scares you. That's fine. Corners. And Jonathan Taylor's used to running through a lot of extra defenders in the box. So. He's a good runner, but they will not win this game. I think Miami's defense will play better. The Colts' defense hasn't been as good as expected. No, that's, that's been one of the more disappointing things, I think, this season. Yeah. If you're any Colts, any else Colts fan. But, again, I think they get back on track in this one. This okay. is that game. Otherwise, it, it's going to be a long season. And then they got their schedule gets brutal, brutal. in the next couple yeah. of weeks. No question. I mean, it's a big game for both these teams if they want to uh, – Close in on a, a playoff chase. I mean, you can't go 0 and 4. Dolphins can't go 1 and 3. Just can't happen. All right, let's move on to the biggest spread of the weekend. I mean, this is a huge one here. It's big. Bills minus 16 and a half against the Texans. Pete, you're going to be on the Bills side of things. Tell me why 
Buffalo's going to cover this spread. Because Josh Allen is playing back to his old self. He was fantastic last week, doing things he didn't even do last year. Yeah, I think this kid's one of the most improved quarterbacks we've seen from year one to now, ever. And defensively, they're really good. The Texans are bad. They're bad on defense. Their offensive line is okay. And I thought I saw some good things from Davis Mills in that game. He they didn't, know, they didn't allow him to do anything. They didn't let him do anything. You thought so Davis good. Mills was going to be the next coming of Josh Allen. Davis Mills played a decent game in that game for a first time what, starter. Cleveland when he came in? What are you talking about? Last week? Yeah. <laughs> for the first time starter, when they allowed him to throw the ball at the end of the half right. down the field, he was fine. I just think they're going to restrict them again. Yeah, That's one a problem. Drive, well, run, it'll be run, run, go make a play. And in that scenario, it's run, run, you're going to turn the ball over. Buffalo wins this game easy. I hate laying the number, but I'm laying it. I'm not going to lay the number for that reason. I just, it's too many points for me right now this early in the season. And I do think, from what you said, I think Davis Mills will be better. And I think they realize if they want to have any shot versus this Bills offense, you have to take some chances. You got to put up some points. They're going to have to let him air it out a little bit even though they're going up against a really tough defense. So uh, I'm, I'm purely taking the points and the press on that. It's just too big of a number. All that being said, I think there's going to be a lot of points scored in this one. So the over is my favorite play, only because of the precedent that I don't like why I'm taking the spread. So I'd rather take the over between the two. So 48 to 7, is that what your pick is? <laughs> if it ends up being that way, again, I, I told you right now, I feel much better about the over-under than I do about the actual spread. Okay, picking the uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Time games on CBS. We got one more of them. It's the 2-1 and one Titans, 7.5-point favorites on the road against the Jets, who are the only team to have yet to lead at any point this season. Do we actually agree on this one? Is that, is that what I'm reading? Is that what I'm yes. seeing right now? Yes, we, we actually agree. We're both laying the points oh, with the yeah. Tennessee Titans. This is Titans lock on, unity. This is lock unity. This is lock unity. We both think it's going to be a low-scoring game, probably because we don't think the Jets are going to score much. Correct. I am concerned. There it There's is. our confetti. I am concerned about this one. You know, you've got some banged up wide receivers for the Tennessee Titans. I don't necessarily know that they'll need them because I do think it's going to be tough to stop Derrick Henry running the football, but something smells fishy about this one. I, I, I'm just telling you, something smells fishy about this one. The Jets have looked awful, but also, even though the Titans defense, I think, stepped up last week, I, I just, I don't know. Something smells bad about this one. Everything's telling me to take the Titans, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to be that fish and get hooked. Low scoring game, but I don't feel good about it. I'm taking the Titans too. I'm the fish, and uh, the Jets are awful right now. And it's not just Zach Wilson, because uh, he's not playing very well, he's very good football either, but the offensive line's bad. As bad as the Titans are on defense, I think this might be one of those games where they actually start to you know, feel better about themselves because the Jets are so bad on on. Uh, and thank you for this graphic, by the way. Yeah. I mean, Everyone's throwing on Sam Darnold. That was unfair to him then. It's unfair to Zach now. It's, it's what's around them at that position in that organization. And they're not great on defense either. So I, I, I do like the under, and I'll take the Titans and lay the points. Wow. Lock unity on Yeah, that. that's, this All might right. be one of the first times we both agreed on, on, on both. both. It is rare. Over. Well, usually you don't pick the, the total. I don't pick so. all 16 of them. Like, <laughs> like Titans in the under. Work harder. I don't that's the play on that one. Let's recap the, the early games that are on CBS. And there, there is some agreement, not just on, on that one, but also on Kansas City. We like the Chiefs minus the seven in Philadelphia, a get right game for Kansas City. Maybe that defense as well. That's tied for the highest over under of the week at 54 and a half. Uh, the other game is coming up a little bit later in the show that we will pick. Up next, late afternoon on Sunday, Aaron Rodgers looking to keep that mojo going. Packers hosting the reeling Steelers, who are really in need of a win. Our NFL game previews for week four, presented by Caesar Sportsbook, are lines courtesy of Caesar Sportsbook. Some really good late afternoon games. You got the, uh, boy, the 3-0 matchup, Cardinals and Rams, NFC West. CBS has the 3-0 Broncos hosting the Baltimore Ravens, who are getting some reinforcements on both sides of the ball this week. We're going to pick every single one of them. I'm Chris Hassel, joined by Brady Quinn and Pete Prisco. We are going to start with a CBS game at 425 Eastern time, the 1-2 and two Steelers, who just cannot get it done on the ground against the 2-1 and one Packers. This retooled offensive line, uh, they're struggling big time. Uh, Ben's struggling big time. The, the offensive play call with Matt Canada, that's not working out either. Um, they look like a shell of themselves. And then you lose T.J. Watt to a groin injury. Now your pass rush doesn't look quite the same. So uh, it's a bad spot, I think, for the Steelers to be in on the road in Lambeau. You've got Aaron Rodgers playing 
like Aaron, the Aaron Rodgers that was the MVP last year. So I'm going to go ahead and lay the six and a half points here. And I th- I'm actually going to take the under two because I don't know how much the Steelers are going to score. I have zero confidence in that offense, Pete. Yeah, and Deontay Johnson might be back. He might not. And Juju Smith-Schuster's banged up, and he doesn't scare anybody anyways. And so you'll put Alexander maybe a lot on Claypool. And so I think they're going to have problems moving the football. Ben Roethlisberger looks awful. You mentioned it, though. The line is really playing bad football right now. They're get, he's getting hit a bunch. He's holding the ball. Guys don't get open. Uh, thank, thankfully, he has Najee Harris, who's actually been really good. 19 targets It's amazing. Week. And defensively, they're not the same team without T.J. Watt. The Packers went to San Francisco and dominated that game for the first half. I mean, they dominated. That's, that, that sent the real message to the rest of the league. Hey, we're still here. Rodgers is still here. That offense is dynamic. They get their offensive linemen back when they get healthy. They're going to be fine. I'll take the Packers and lay the points. Pittsburgh averaging just 53 yards per game on the ground. So Najee Harris can't run the ball, but they are throwing it to him. It, it just, what can you do on offense with an offensive line that's in shambles like that? Nothing. I mean, the there, same as last there year. Is, it, it's, it's similar to last year. The only difference is that they're not, at least in the passing game, they're not asking Ben to get the ball out quick. I mean, he was getting out lightning quick last year, so we didn't notice the fact that their offensive line was struggling because we didn't see as many sacks. Now you're starting to see the sacks come. Now you're seeing the negative plays. You're seeing the hits on Ben Roethlisberger even more because the passing game has changed a bit. They want to try to go down the field vertically, but at this point you can't. I mean, the only thing I'd say you can do at this uh, juncture of the season is try to mix in some different personnel groupings and get to the edges. I mean, don't even try to run in between the tackles. You've got to find a way of incorporating some different looks, different ways of getting to the edge, getting Najee Harris to the outside. The problem is he's not a burner, so that doesn't really play to his strengths. He's more of a physical runner. He's more of a guy who can help you catch the ball out of the backfield. Does any part of you in this game, because a little bit of me did when I made the pick, get scared off by Steelers and Tomlin regrouping, rallying? Because there's always been a situation where they (coughs) faced something like this and they found a way to to really tough it up and and be in the game. Maybe to cover the spread, (laughs) not to win the game. No, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, maybe to keep it close or maybe they do something to, to, you know, take advantage of, of... no, let me just say this. It's Aaron Rodgers, the Packers at home. No, okay. all right? not the way all he's right. playing. Pete's right. trying to talk you out of it. He's trying to talk no, I just I'm, 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 I'm I almost talked myself now. out of it, but I'm taking the Packers. Are you sure you don't want to? No, I'm okay. taking the Packers. All right, Packers we'll, we'll minus give six, six and, and a half. half points. I'm taking we the Packers. We, we can do a separate, but I'll give you nope. seven. No, nope. one seven? Six and a half. Six and a half. The other late game on CBS this Sunday, really intriguing matchup. The 3 0 Broncos getting their first real test of the season. Tough matchup, too. Um, you know, look, KJ Hamler's out with the torn ACL for the season. I think that hurts their offense. He was that, that mix of, of really, you know, speed, top end speed, you know, big playability down the field. Uh, and, and I know they got Tim Patrick. He's played great. Cortland Sutton as well. Judy's still out. So kind of some questions there, at least in the passing game. This one just has a different feel to me. I just, something tells me that the Ravens are going to be able to take care of business. With Lamar Jackson, it's tough to stop that rushing attack. Kind of negates some of that pass rush, too. Uh, I know that Denver's a tough place to play. Trust me, I've been there, played there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the point here, though. And I, do th- I do think it's going to be a high-scoring game, though. I think we hit the over uh, of, of 44 total points. I'm going to take the Broncos, and I really like what they've done. And, and in terms of their defense, I think that defense is moving to being special. And if they continue to play the way they do, they'll figure out a way. I think Fangio will figure out a way to take away some of Lamar Jackson's runs. And on the other side... You look at that Ravens defense, they don't rush the passer that well. And, and it's been a little bit of a concern. They have to pick that up. They didn't getting, play getting well. Getting healthier, though. I mean, rush the passer on fourth and 19 and you win the game. I mean, that's a pretty, right? And, and yeah. some, I mean, last week, I just think that this is a team, when you look at them, their identity has always been run the ball with Lamar Jackson and knock the quarterback down. They have to be better knocking the quarterback down. And in this game, you're going to see Bridgewater get the ball out. So I think they're going to get the ball out. They're going to make some plays. They'll run the ball. I like Denver. I don't does, love it. Does, it, but I like does it bother you, though, looking at the record? Denver's 3 0 right now. But look at who they've beaten. Those teams were combined 0 9. Does that bother you at all making this pick? Yeah, I mean, a little bit because they haven't beaten anybody. Right. I mean, but they did win two they, of them. They've on the, handled everyone for the most part. On the road. Right. Two of, in the NFL, if you go on the road. Look, Denver played Jacksonville better than Arizona did on the road. Yeah. So, yeah, I, so I'll take Denver in this spot. They've won every game by double digits so far and are only giving up 8.7 points per game. Back-to-back roadies for those Ravens, too. Yeah, 2-1 and one Ravens, 3-0 and o Broncos. A little disagreement on that one. All right, 4.05 Eastern time. 
Three and O cards and three and O Rams. The battle for first in the maybe the best division in football, the NFC West. I don't think it's maybe. I think it really is right I mean, now. I guess I mean, the only other argument is AFC. AFC West. West. I'll say one of the West divisions right. at this point. But look, I, I love what the Rams have done. I think it really took me this past week watching uh, Matt Stafford against the Bucks. Just absolutely. I mean, the way McVay's dialing stuff up, Deshaun Jackson still getting behind defenses. Uh, it, it's too tough for me not to want to take them and lay the points right now. They actually have a home field environment, too. You saw the crowd. You saw the impact that had on the game. So I think the Rams are in a good spot. I, I think at this point, we start to see kind of the contenders and pretenders. The Rams are for real. They'll win this game. They'll cover this spread. I, I do think it'll be an under, though. I don't think we're going to see a ton of scoring from the Cardinals. I'm a little bit concerned about where that offense is going right now. What do we call the, the when we bring the confetti out? Lock, lock unit. This is the exact opposite. Okay, lock in. This is exact opposite. We got to come up with something like you know whatever we can do because I'm on the opposite side <laughs> entirely here. When I look at Arizona, I think they got caught peeking ahead last week. They did not play very well. Oh yeah, they do that. Team the NFL do that. Oh of course. Do you think Tom Brady did that last week too? No, his defense stunk. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but they got caught peeking ahead, and I think they're going to regroup, go back. And they're going to put up some points in this game. The Rams are good. Don't get me wrong. They're the number one team in the league right now. I, I, put, I had them number one. I had the Arizona number two. And I think the Cardinals will play well on offense here to stay in the game. I don't think they'll win the game. I think the Rams will win the game. But I think the Cardinals are going to stay around because of Kyler Murray. And uh, so I'll take the points. And I'm going over the total. Oh, a lot of scoring. And again, that's tied for the highest total, 54 and a half. Look at those numbers. Rams 8-0 straight up and unbeaten against the spread with Sean McVay as the head coach against the Cardinals. I think the Rams played last week like that was their season Super Bowl. They Do you think they take a step back? Oh, so that, yeah, no, they're going to fall by the wayside now? No, they're not going to fall by the wayside. But you know when teams put so much into beating the team and showing No, because here's the reality is what teams put a lot of emphasis on is winning your division. That's why they can't, they can't afford to look towards this – look – Past Tampa Bay and say this game because they, they need wanted to win the, this. They wanted to show the world they could beat the Super Bowl. That's fine, but I, but I think they understand the importance of winning I get this it. game it's because hard to do. that NFC South is a lot hard easier to win to than stay the up NFC West. Back to back weeks, it's hard to stay at the same level. You know that. You of course, games. but I'm just saying it's a much tougher division. These games are even more meaningful. I get it. Got to win them. But in the they're more meaningful. Yes, in the division in the race. But in well, you, the grand think, the, you think the Rams things, are going to win though? You're just saying you think Arizona yeah, keeps it close. But in the grand scheme of things. Last week was a uh, kind of a way to send a message to the rest of the league. We're for real, more so than if they beat Arizona. Yeah, I think it's fair to say. But you could also make the case, as I right. just said before, uh, maybe Tampa Bay was overlooking I the Rams. I rest my case. Maybe they were overlooking <laughs> the Rams into this. I game. rest my case. <laughs> Two of the five remaining unbeatens in the NFL, and they're in the same division. <laughs> also in the NFC West, you got the 2-1 the and 49ers so close to being Three and zero. Had they they just made a stop against Aaron Rodgers? No, 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 no. Had they used had they the not clock watched the end more. of the game yes, with the clock, right, management. clock management? Everybody, nobody, people need to call out Kyle Shanahan. He messed it up. You well, could have made, made the same case for the Chargers. No, beating the Chiefs. He snapped. They, they should have kicked the field goal. No, they should not. Of, no, they should not have. Oh, here we you go. You score when you score. They. <laughs> and I'm not. I'm not. I have no problem with the 49ers scoring. They snapped the ball with 12 seconds on the play, play clock. clock. Yeah. There's the problem. Who's to say Rodgers still doesn't lead him down with 12 fewer seconds on the clock? You saw how it played out. There's it just Yeah, but no he played incompletion. Maybe he doesn't in that particular no. incompletion before the completion. So Kyle didn't scoreboard. botch it? No, I, I, yeah, I, think he, I think when he goes back and looks at it, he probably wished he would have handled it differently, right? But I think you could make the same argument about the Chargers. The only difference is they won the game, but they still gave Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes a shot for a Hail Mary at the end. They could have ran that clock out, kicked the field goal to win it. You got, it over. I have no problem trying to score as quickly as you can score. You want to score. You don't want to leave it in a windy day on the field goal in, in Kansas City. It was terrible. And in this situation, <laughs> they just needed to bleed the clock down, the play clock, and then score. They had their timeouts. It sounds like you're making the same case. No, I'm you're not. just trying to defend your argument. I'm no, sorry I'm I led you in that direction. We're supposed to look ahead, not you sound back. Delirious. Uh, I'm San just... Francisco is a two and a half point favorite at home against the Seahawks, who have maybe the worst defense in the NFL right now. It is <laughs> awful. Um, but it can't continue to be this bad for this long. Look, they figured it out last year when, what, after six or seven games, they started to play better. I think they play better in this one. I, look, I'm going to take the two and a half points divisional matchup. Uh, it tends to be more of, a, more of a physical battle, too, between these two teams. So I think it's a low-scoring game. I've got the Seahawks and the two-and-a-half points on this one. 
don't feel great about it. Though. I think, honestly, you could make a case for either one of these teams and, and hitting the over or under in this one. Seattle's defense is putrid. Every single time Kirk Cousins needed to make a play, he could. went back in the pocket and he made a play. And guys were wide open. They're bad. And let's not forget the week before it was the same type of situation yep. with Tennessee. It's a bad defense right now. I think the 49ers will find a way to win this game. And Seattle's in a bunch of trouble if they lose this game. At 1-3 and three in that division, they're going to have problems making the postseason. So I think there's bigger storylines, too, on the other side of the season, you know, as far as you know, who's there, what they do with, with what they have at the yeah. end of the season. Like as in? Well, I'm just saying, I mean, it would be the first time they have made the playoffs, right, with Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll together. And so then that, you might be thinking that maybe he's looking for greener pastures somewhere else. So does Russell go or does Pete go? Well, I don't think Pete goes. So then Russell <laughs> goes. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, we saw those rumblings this past offseason. Correct. We saw how awkward that was. Yeah. I mean, a season that doesn't equate to the playoffs probably maybe leads to that conversation. Every the year they go into the season, oh, the line's going to be better, the, line, the offensive line's going to be Never better. Never is. Never better. Never is. Never better. And uh, close to being 1-3 and three if they can't pull off an upset on the road in Santa Clara. Uh, again, not much agreement. They only agree on the Packers minus 6.5 against the Steelers in Green Bay. Two more games to pick, including... Tom Brady going back, hello from the other side, to face Bill Belichick. Our NFL game previews in week four presented by Caesars Sportsbook, and they've got the Buccaneers as six and a half point road favorites in Foxborough against the New England Patriots, the Monday Nighter Raiders at Chargers. Brady Quinn, Pete Prisco discussing the return. Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski going back to face Bill Belichick. Yeah, look, it, it, we've heard the storyline all week. It's going to be interesting to see how the knowledge that Tom Brady has, not only about the personnel there, but also the systems on both sides of the ball, the defense, the offense, what tips you know, he gives Todd Bowles to help prepare for Josh McDaniel's offense and Mac Jones. All that's going to be that, that interesting cat and mouse game we see throughout the course of the game. But I think Tom Brady's going to come back there and want to lay up a huge number mm. on the New England Patriots. I love the over in this game for that specific reason. I also am going to go ahead and say I'll, I'll go ahead and lay the six and a half points. You know, you used to not want to bet against the, the Patriots at home with Bill Belichick, but that was back when they had Tom Brady. Different team now. Offense doesn't have that same explosiveness, Pete. Uh, I, I, love, I love the Bucks in this spot. They're just a better football. Did they exchange pleasantries before the game, you think? Belichick yeah, and Brady, yeah. you think? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They'll do a small, you know, like a little, hey, hey, welcome hey, how back. you doing? Yeah, and then they're not going to sit and have a chit chat. That one they're not going to do. Uh, I like the Bucks as well. And let me just get this out of the way. Danny Cannell called this the most anticipated regular season game in history. It's one of the, not even one of the three best games this weekend. But if you had to pick one to watch, well, wouldn't I, it be this I, one? No. I, I, I oh, think, come on. I think what he's saying watch, is the storylines, right? And, and, and the only thing I'd say in that regard is, look, you know, far going back to Green Bay, when, when he got the chance to join the Minnesota Vikings, he did, and he wanted to have the chance to go back. That, that was another great storyline going into that game. Montana, back to, to take on the 49ers. All those storylines, I think, going into it. You can make a case. But it's not one of the three best games of the weekend. And so it's got <laughs> a lot of anti- it's got an anticipation for two guys, Gronkowski and Brady and, yeah. and, and Belichick. And Belichick. That, that's who it is. So and the fans there. Once you kick the ball off, none of that matters. You play football. So from a football standpoint, it's not one of the three best games of the weekend. It's not better than Arizona I, and I, the we Rams. Un- we understand what you're saying. Okay. Get off my front lawn. No, you know, it's not get off my front go. lawn. It is. Because Brady's a, There's closer to my age to it. than most players in that league. I don't know that anyone thought even Tom Brady himself that he would be finishing his career somewhere else he is he won a Super Bowl somewhere else it's a great storyline to have him come back the greatest resume we've ever seen as a quarterback back to Foxborough to take on the coach that helped do it with him how about for the Patriots you're 0-2 at home already and you lose James White for the season it, it's it's tough in particular though for Mac Jones I think Josh McDaniels is scheming some things up that was that that kind of Swiss Army knife where whether you were trying to find a matchup on the outside in the passing game or just running the football, you take that away from Mac Jones. And their offensive line hasn't been playing well, so it puts more pressure on Mac Jones because that was a good guy to come out of the backfield and dump the ball off. That hits, that's a big hit for them. Yeah. All right, White out for the season. Tom Brady, by the way, going to pass Drew Brees probably in the first half for the most passing yards of all time. Well, there's a storyline. Yes, another storyline, Pete. Monday night football, here's a storyline for you. John Gruden and the Raiders looking to start 4-0. They're at the 2-1 Chargers. High-scoring game. Love the over in this one because of both offenses, what we've seen. I hate the hook here, but I'm going to go ahead and lay the 3.5 points. 
I just think the Chargers are, are an overall better team. I trust that defense more than I do, even though Derek Carr, you can make the case. If we had the MVP right now, it wouldn't be this guy. It would be Derek Carr the way he's played so far. But so, Herbert's played well, well, too. It wouldn't be this guy, but he's the better quarterback, and he's going to be a great quarterback. All, all you had to do was watch last week to know that. There's no sophomore slump. Put that aside. And we agree on this one across Ooh. the board. Chargers and the over. I think we're going to see a lot of points. I think it's going to be a fun game. And this might be another one of those games that's better than Tampa Bay, New England. There's nothing better than, than seeing the confetti just, just drain over Pete Prisk. Hey, he, I'm a happy guy. Hey, you I, I like to, confetti. You, are happy you don't get there. that on uh, FFT when you, get the, uh, when you get the name that player thing. So we had to give it to you on this show. No, we don't. Nor does Jamie get it for start of the week. <laughs> Who's the start of the week this week? Should I say it? How's it gone yes. so far? 0-3. Oh, Jalen Hurts, start of the week this week. Okay, good. He's my quarterback. That's, okay. that's good to hear. <laughs> Is that good? He is 0-3. He, well, I'm just saying it's good because, I mean, maybe my guy can actually do I mean, he's, he's, he's been, all, been all right when you add in the rushing yards for fantasy. Here's how bad it's getting for the start of the week. Producer Jack, mm -hmm. right? Three questions. The first three questions, ask FFT, all about Tyson. <laughs> all of them. And that's who the start of the week was last week. Oh, Jack's just, just twisting the blade. Fourth time's a charm. Week four is a charm. Let's recap the picks from uh, Brady Quinn and Pete Prisco, the primetime games. Uh, look at all this agreement. A lot of agreement, Pete. I don't like that. We Bucks can rest easy Sunday and a half. Monday. I had a great week last week. Although Pete he says he's not even going to watch the game. Doesn't really care about the no, game. No, that's not what I said. Love the game. And just, uh, uh, Okay, go shake his hand. These up. are the lock unity picks, folks. So lock these in right now. Both <laughs> Pete and Brady, like the Titans minus seven and a half against... The Jets. Yes. The yeah. Jets and the under. Chargers minus three and a half against the Raiders and the over. Lock unity. For I'm going 16 and 0 with my over under picks this week. I did hey, quick, some quick math. <laughs> I'll make it up. They don't agree that much. They only agreed on six of the 16 games. I'm going to make it up. This week. 16 and 0. After Brady next 14 week. and 2 over under last week. And we've got no the documentation. Proof. We've got the proof. No proof. No Pete proof. didn't have a single win in the over under. No, 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 no. Not one. Brady Quinn, Pete Prisco, Chris Hassel. See you. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.